Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, we're going to be taking a look at a Detroit Classic. All Test is a 5.2% lager from the Detroit Brewing Company in Detroit, Michigan. Now I have to admit, I don't have any nostalgia for this beer. This isn't anything that I drank back in the day, and my daddy was a bit more of a Michelob kind of guy, but this beer does have a bit of history. Now the original All Test Lager dates back to the 1910s, and at one point it was big enough to sponsor both the Detroit Lions and the Tigers in the 60s before fading out in the 90s. Now it was brought back officially a few years ago, and obviously I'm gonna be checking it out today. So let's get a look at the label. We'll get it into a glass, but first I'd like to thank my executive producers, Brian Kramer, David Jeffries, Vinnie Kent, and Cam Freeman for helping to bring this review to you today. If you'd like to become a producer, help out the channel, or maybe just throw me a couple bucks to buy me a beer, take a look at my Patreon at patreon.drafttherapy.com, where you can get early access to these videos and a few other special perks that are available only to patrons. Let's take a look at the can. As you can see from the top, there's this gold ring around the top. The rest of the label is pretty much white and red. Across the top, it says a Detroit tradition restored. And in that, there is a gold box with a red box inside of it. It says Altes original Detroit lager. Then some German, which I cannot read. If you've seen any of my advent calendar videos, I'm not even going to pronounce it. It says, we are proud to bring back this brisk lager beer first brewed over 100 years ago in Detroit. But you know, it's 12 fluid ounces. It's brewed by Altus Detroit Brewing Company in Detroit, Michigan. If we turn around to the other side, it has the exact same thing. And then on the side, it has the government warning. Uh, the only thing I can see here is dating wise, it says Altus uh, 21-08. Now I'm going to guess that means that this was brewed in August of um, 21. But I think lagers last a long time. Uh, I'm not going to put it out of the realm of possibility that there, this might be a little bit you know, getting close to the end of its life or freshness. But if you've ever drank a Bud Light or a, any kind of lager, really macro lager, you know those can kind of last a while. So crack it and put a nose on the can here. And what we got. So like I said, those advent calendar videos, I've drank a lot of lagers in the past couple of years. It has that kind of, um, has that sweet kind of corny aroma to it. So it smells like what you'd expect from a lager. Let's go ahead and pour it. Coming out really golden yellow out of the can itself. It's pretty transparent on the pour. I'm gonna pour just a little bit, tad bit more in there. Not overfilling this glass. We're looking at about a finger of head, a bright, brilliant white head. I don't see any kind of other coloration, sometimes through the bottom of the glass, reflecting up through the head. You can see it has like a yellowish tint. This is white. It looks white, lots of compact bubbles. Looks a really looks like a really appealing head. If we hold it up to the light here, it is golden. I mean, that is golden yellow. That was what you would expect from a lager. To you guys, it probably looks a little bit darker. It looks maybe, looking at my monitor, it looks a little bit orangier than what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing through the light is pure gold. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, sediment floating in suspension, and I can see my fingers straight through that. I can see, you can probably see me to some respect. I can see you. Put your pants back on. Let's put a nose on the glass. Yeah, just getting that same kind of golden, um, you know, hay kind of aroma. Maybe a little bit of a corny kind of honey sweetness in there as well. Let's go ahead and try it out. Cheers. We always talk about the mouthfeel first, if I can even say it. Uh, we talk about the mouthfeel first. Very crisp, very light, very much like what you would expect from a lager. Let's talk about the flavor here. It's probably going to be a short one because this is really clean, has a really um, very reminiscent of what you would expect from a lager. Like a, it's not, it has more flavor than a macro style lager. It's not quite as sweet, I think. Uh, originally, when I talked about Fritz Lager from Old Nation, I talked about you can taste the difference between, um, you know, you can taste the difference between a macro lager and a craft lager where they, you can just tell that the care, the love, everything has been put into the beer. I feel it's the same with this. It's definitely a different flavor than Fritz Lager. I feel like Fritz Lager, I'm just comparing it to the last big lager that I reviewed. Big lager I reviewed, big Michigan lager I reviewed. I think that Fritz Lager was a little bit sweeter, a little bit crisper. This one has a little bit more of a, there is a sweetness in there. There is a hay kind of quality that you get out of it. 
There's a bit of a sweetness that comes in on the swallow, like right in between intake and the swallow, there is a sweetness that kind of rolls around on the middle of your tongue. As you swallow, it has a bit of a, a little bit more of a spicy kind of characteristic on the finish. Uh, and then it dries out rather quickly. I don't get like really bready notes out of it, but I do get kind of like a crackery dryness that you get on the finish. Low ABV, I think in the intro I said it was 5.2%. I don't actually see it uh, looking at the can here. But yeah, low, low ABV, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, this is definitely like a tailgating kind of beer or a beer where you're going to be drinking, you know, multiple beers in a night, maybe like a Super Bowl party or a football kind of deal where you're, I mean, that's already passed at this point, but for that kind of arrangement or like a college football or tailgating, perfect style beer when you don't want to go after a macro. Now the macros are going to obviously, like I mentioned already, have a little bit of a lower taste. It's not going to be quite as flavorful. They're a little bit closer in flavor, like really light, especially when you get to the light beer, they get to that kind of almost watery kind of lightness. This has much more taste than that. This is low ABV, again, 5.2% roughly. Uh, and it has, you know, it just has a lot of flavor. It definitely kicks in. You know you're drinking beer. It's not like I'm drinking beer flavored water. This is definitely uh, has much more of a, a flavor to it. Like I said, you're getting that hay, you're getting that kind of a bit of a grassy quality, a little bit of a honey sweetness, and you're getting that finish, that drier finish on the tail, that little bit of a spicy note. And that's what you can kind of expect from craft lagers that you don't get from macros. So uh, if you're a, a lager fan, if you're watching this video and you've maybe you have never heard of Altes, or maybe you're coming from like a, a Budweiser or a Miller or a Michelob like my dad would come from, this is a little bit, has much more of a flavor profile to it than one of those. Maybe this is a beer that someone that just drinks like macros and hasn't really, you know, they don't even drink Blue Moon because it's got too much flavor to it. This might be a good gateway to say, hey, look, there is beer out there that is the same style that you like. There are several different styles of beer, and that's why they taste different. So if you know somebody like that, I think Altest would definitely fit the bill. But I also think it fills uh, a lot of that kind of nostalgic feeling that a lot of people have that, you know, maybe a parent or maybe back in the day, if you're old enough to have drank this beer in the mid-90s or early 90s or pre-90s, if you're watching this, uh, you know, you can just kind of sit back and reminisce. It's kind of like drinking a Stroh's, right? Like those kind of disappeared for a long time, and now Stroh's is back in full force. So yeah, I would say that this is a great bridge from a, ma from a, a macro style uh, lager. And I think that somebody that maybe is just coming from the ales and they want to jump in and try a lager and they want to see what all the fuss is about. I think this is a great example of the style. Uh, it's, I would, if I had my pick between like, like I said, the most recently, you know, craft lager that I've, that I reviewed, I would probably pick a Fritz more because I like that one a little bit better. But I do th think that this one definitely has a place in the lager kind of pantheon, especially for the nostalgia factor alone. All right, friends, that's been Altest Lager, the original Detroit lager. Do you have fond memories of this beer with family or maybe just yourself, you know, drinking it alone? And have you tried it since it's come back? Let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell. I'm here talking about beer twice a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite or you might not know to avoid a clunker if you're not subscribed and getting those notifications. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are, and most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Cheers. Hey, friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, let me hit that ass with a blast from the past.